Christians are not right. I knew that would get your attention. You, like me, hear so often in the news, oh, those right-wingers, or those ultra-right-wing, or those on the left. Well, I do want to tell you that Christians and Catholics are not right. We are center. We are absolute, unmovable center. Here's what's happened. As the enemy has moved a group of people and an ideology further and further and further and further and further away from the truth, it makes those of us who are still standing firm in that truth, standing firm on the center, which is Christ, which is God, our Father, it makes us appear further and further away from them. And the lie of the enemy is that we have moved so far right that we are ridiculous. But I say to you, and I, I ask you to start hearing this and speaking this way too, uh, yourself to those who you talk to, because remember, whoever owns the language owns the message. We have never been to the right of the truth, to the right of the message. We have always been firm in the center. And here's an example. You think about styles, as styles have changed. They've gone from total body coverage to less body coverage, to long dresses, to uh, sh knee length dresses, and then to skirts. And heck, now I had a girlfriend make a joke about the bathing suits of the 1940s are now the homecoming dresses of today because of everything they show, which is so true. Who is to the right? Those who prudishly wear those long dresses that still cover their bodies, or those of us that show everything when God said that we must be modest when God discusses those. I'd like to think about the, the, the more obvious things where we used to know when you stand firm in God's truth, well, we do know that no sex is allowed outside of marriage, that the marital act, as it is called, is only acceptable in marriage. It is not allowed to be contracepted, but I'll hold contraception for a moment. But what has happened is it has become more acceptable. Catholics, Christians stand right here in truth. Is become more acceptable first. Well, some people will have sex outside of marriage. God won't punish them. And then, oh, they will move in with each other. And that's acceptable. And then, well, now it's okay to have children when you're not married. And more children are born outside of wedlock today than are born within wedlock. And little by little, it makes those of us who still stand on the truth of God and say it is a sin to have sex outside of marriage. It is a sin to live with someone else before you're married. It is a sin to have that act anywhere but in the marital union makes to those who are way far on the left make us look way far on the right, but we are not. We are still holding firm in the center. We are not right wing. Eventually, then it made those who accepted homosexuality push towards, okay, well then let's accept trans transsexualism. Let's even change the language and call it transgender. Let's make up a new word and call it gender and not sex. And then let's start chopping off the body parts of people. Let's then say and move on and on and on, right? So it changes the message. And they say that those of us who still believe that a person born with female genitalia and an XX chromosomes um, are not females if we don't want to be, and it, but we are crazy if we accept that, and we are crazy and we are right wingers if we accept that those born with XY chromosomes are are um, men. We are right wingers if we think that someone should have to live together. We are right wingers if we think that it's. I know my friends who are homosexuals; they're good people. That's not what this is about. People who struggle with same-sex attraction is what those of us in the center say. Those of us who still stand on God's truth saying, we are all sinners, including me, so you can't throw that truth bomb at me. But I stand on God's truth. There's no such thing as right wing and left wing. It is simply center and everyone who moves away to different degrees. I remember when contraception became legal. I was a young girl. It was horrifying. The culture moved a little bit more to the left. Then it moved even further to the left when it said 
you know, abortion is only a blob of tissues. And then it moved even further to the left when it said, well, it's okay to take a baby's life um, the first trimester. And then they moved further to the left and they said, the moms, it's all about the moms, that they need to have a good life and we can't worry about the kids. And then it got even further to the left when they said that you can abort a baby even after the day it's coming out of the mother's, mother's womb. And now they've gone so much far to the left that they say in some states, when a child is up to 30 days old, it can still be killed. Do you see how when we stand on God's truths, we are illuminating the darkness because we stand in the light? Therefore is the name calling of right-wingers, you go too far, compromise. There can be no compromise with God and God's truth. There can't be. So take up, your, take up your, your courage, be willing to be called those names, and know the truth. Always, always, always stand firm in God's truth. Everyone else that moves away is just going further and further to the side of the enemy. Not my call, God's call. When anyone walks and espouses a truth that does not belong to God, they, we, all of us who have sinned, who have fallen short, which is all of us, have got to come back to the center. And Christ alone is our center. No matter how many generations have passed, I've heard several people say, well, you know, God understands. God wouldn't possibly send that many people to hell. Why would God create people? if he was just going to send them to hell. God doesn't create people to send them to hell. And I will never fully understand the mind of God until I meet him face to face. But God gave us free will. And if two thirds of us choose hell and one third of us choose heaven, and God knew that and God would still create us, well then, first of all, that's his prerogative. Second of all, we still have that choice. We still have to stand on what God said is right. He said we'd be persecuted. We are. He said we'd be mocked. We are. He said we would be living in a country that was not our own. We would be foreigners, and that we are. The more the light of Christ shines on, through you, it shines on the darkness of another person's sin. It shines on the darkness of Satan's lies and it magnifies their sinfulness. They hate that and therefore they lash back out. Get used to it. It's the way it's going to be. Don't fight it. Fight lies, fight deceit, but don't fight the fact that people are going to see you as a right winger, an ultra right conservative. I mean, the words are quite ultra. No, still here, you're just really ultra left then. I, for one, stand on the truth of Christ. I, for one, will take whatever mocking and judgment and persecution I receive. And I pray to God as I age in any of my sinful areas, I grow closer and closer and closer to the center, which is Christ, which is my Savior, that I never go even a millimeter to the left of what God has requested of us, has required of us. I, for one, want to be in heaven for all of eternity. I, for one, want mercy from God and forgiveness. And I hope you do too. God is waiting for you to make this decision. If it's getting difficult, he'll help you. And he sent me to help. If you need to, find me at breakfastwithbacon.com. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching yet another informational bacon bit. And I want to remind you, as always, to live your life sunny side up.